Welcome to the Jill on Money Call of the Week. We are presented by Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Remember, if you've got a financial question, maybe it's a career question, anything that's on your mind, send us an email. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. That is what Michael did. He is calling from Minneapolis. Hi, Michael. What can I do for you? Oh, hey, Jill. Nice to uh, chat. And uh, I'm just curious about my situation in terms of I retired uh, a couple years ago, uh, followed the fire movement, and um, I'm just curious about a withdrawal strategy, I think, more more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of that adjustment to go from, you know, having a steady income, a good income, to now just living off investments. I have very little income coming in currently. Okay, so tell me, how old are you, Michael? So I just turned 50. Congratulations. Thank you. You are now officially in the- Officially old. No, I was gonna say you're officially in the high wisdom category. Uh, Okay, (laughs) so um, you you adhere to the FIRE movement, which meant financial independence, retire early. Tell me how much money did you save up in anticipation for this? What do you have right now? So I'm currently at a net worth of about 830,000. Fantastic. Well, tell me about the expenses. What what do you actually need from this portfolio? Well, I'm single, no kids. I, you know, live very modestly. I think that, um, you know, growing up, just uh, very conservative with my spending, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and just, you know, I live very lean, uh, very modestly. And so there aren't a lot of expenses, but I've got an addiction to travel. That's probably my biggest expense, I would say. Okay. Um, and, you know, that that's a little daunting, I think, just given the fact that, you know, it travel's expensive. Sure. Uh, other than that, really, I mean, I'm debt-free for the most part. You know, I just, I have a dog and, you know, I... That's about it. Really. Okay. You said debt free for the most part. Which is the part that's not debt free? Um, well, and this is the the situation is that you know I'm using credit cards now for my expenses without having a, a dedicated withdrawal strategy. So mm-hmm. that's really my intention here over the next few weeks to sit down with somebody and talk about what makes the most sense to actually. You know, if I if I calculate my um, expenses based on you know kind of the four percent you rule or using the fire calculator, mm-hmm. I'm right there. You I, can you do know, it, and, and so I can do it. Right. Um, but again, it's going from just continuous withdrawals to where I'm at now is is very it's it's hard. Any part time work that you could do just to beef this picture up a little bit, just like something fun or yeah. something that'll keep you engaged. And, and I do. I mean, I'm an ideas guy. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm try, trying to get a travel business off the ground. There's very little, you know, income coming in from that right now until I get that up and running. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I teach pickleball. I, you know, which brings in some income. Yep. And I, you know, I drive for Lyft. I do a few things here and there. And yeah, so there are absolutely are ways. Okay, and, that's you good. know, if I look, if I, if I look at that, Jill, I mean, I could be around a, you know, a thousand a month. Perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping yeah. for. I actually wrote that down. I wrote down expenses, two grand a month, and then I wrote down question mark one k a month. So if you, yeah. so if you could essentially create some, you know, a thousand bucks a month of income. Of course, you have to pay tax on that. And then you yeah. now are pulling your um, your withdrawals back to, you know, another thousand dollars. Instead of two thousand dollars a month from the 830, I sure would like it if it were just a thousand dollars a month and you were just hustling to get the other thousand. Or if you found yourself traveling and it cost like one year instead of being a really smart, frugal traveler, you splurged a little bit, that it wouldn't blow through your budget. I think that that's kind of what I would be looking at. Now, let's talk about the types of accounts that you have right now. Of the 830, what is in a taxable account that you can get your hands on? Yeah, so the non-qualified is about uh, 500000 of that. Great. That's perfect. Um, and, and then the balance would be, you know, an IRA and a 401k that I still had left over. Okay. Are you going to move the IRA and the 401k you going to are you going to consolidate those in one place just to manage it more seamlessly yeah. okay yeah. That, that's the plan um and sorry i should have said um, roth ira oh, is, is okay. what i meant should have 
401k. Okay. Right. So wait a minute. So of the the IRA 401k Roth IRA, how much is in how much is in money that has not yet been taxed? Um, that's about thirty percent of the eight thirty that I that I mentioned. Okay. Because obviously, when you're not making a lot of money, now could be a very good time to convert some of this Correct. money into a Roth, which I think would be great for you. The general trend that I would look at is that if you are going to, you know, ideally in the next 10 years have converted all of your money from tax deferred into Roth money, that would be great. It's going to eat up some of your taxable account, but I think it's still worth doing. And then you would be pulling first from the taxable account. And I would always have the 25, 30,000 bucks. I'd always have some money in cash. You need to have that money sitting there for you. And that you would replenish that account, you know, maybe once or twice a year. Try to really adhere to pulling $1,000 a month out of the total rather than two. Because I think you're so young. I mean, you could live for 40 more years. Instead of saying the 4% rule, I would be looking more like the 3% rule for you. Because you're Mm -hmm. so young. And that's that's also because I am a wimp. But it's also that we don't really know what's going to happen for you. If all of a sudden you're like, you know what, Jill, I am actually making $2,000 a month and I don't have to touch this account, your situation is going to look better and better. It just it mm-hmm. just will. And the way that your situation improves the most is to find something you love to do that's fun. Because remember, the FIRE movement is about financial independence. The majority of the people that I've interviewed about the FIRE movement are people who are actually finding that their their next careers are the most fun. But if you could say, hey, you know what? It's totally fun for me to teach pickleball. I love pickleball, by the way. But that's a fun thing or that, you know, um, like my friend was telling me she was she's a retired dean of a university and she started tutoring kids. And she just said, it's just so much fun and there's no pressure and it brings in some money. And like I get to pay my real estate taxes and feel like I still have, I'm a touch with human beings. So I think that anything you can do to drive some income and then think about using the taxable account to first fund, you know, until, you know, probably pretty much for the next 10 years to be that that's where you're tapping. I think that makes most sense. Okay. All right. Good. Now, don't and then blow the it. Withdrawal should be from cash. Is that yes. right? Or... Yes. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And then you may okay. want to rebalance once, twice a year, so that you always have enough money in cash to do the things you want to do. So that's. And where would the money come from for the to to fund the cash reserves? Let's say that you have in a year the market went nuts. I made a lot of money mm-hmm. in my taxable account. In rebalancing, what's the goal of rebalancing? You take the money that has gone up and taken you out of your balance, right? Your allocation gets out of whack. You're tilted more towards stocks. You take that money and you say, okay, some part of it has to go to cash because I always have to have my, you know, 50, 30, 30 grand in cash. Some of it has to go in bonds. And then you reinvest in the areas that have lagged in your reallocation and rebalancing process, what you really have to keep in mind is cash is an asset class for you and it is a vital one. And that's Mm -hmm. when you are funding your cash account. Got it. Okay, good. And yeah, I'm, I'm heavy on stocks now. And that's the other thing is that, you know, over the next year, we don't know what that's going to look like, of course, and there's talk of recession. So I'm, I'm looking to, you know, move some things over to more secure Yeah. And, you know, and by the way, you don't have income right now. So what you should be looking at is, you know, for a single guy, obviously, long term capital gains rates is zero percent if you're making under 40 grand or 39 grand. And it's only 15 percent. So it's Mm. a great way to take advantage of the tax code. You don't have income. Let's do it. Perfect. Thank All right. you so much. My pleasure. Good All luck. Right. And and okay. go go teach some pickleball, will you? And I'm off to do it right now. Thanks Fantastic. Take care. Okay, that's the call of the week. If you have a financial question, just give us a holler. Send an email to askjill at jillonmoney.com or go to the website, jillonmoney.com. You can click the Contact Us button right there. Oh, by the way, while you're there, sign up for our free newsletter. It's free. Why not? We drop new episodes of Jill on Money every Tuesday and Thursday, and you can download the show anywhere that you get your podcasts. Apple, Google Play, Radio.com, Stitcher, wherever. Our music is composed by Joel Goodman. 
Mark Talercio is our executive producer. We're distributed by Cadence 13, and our show is presented by Marcus by Goldman Sachs. See you next week.